want to get game ball here. All right, Jimmy. Jimmy! Come in here, man. All right, man. You want to say something? Come on! Hey! Hey, ain't no! They got whole second half, boys. Let's go make this count, huh? We got something special. Team on three, one, two, three, team! Hey. was your San Francisco 49ers following the Thursday night win over the Arizona Cardinals. I'm Kiana Martin, joined by Mr. Clutch himself, 49ers tight end Ross Dwelly. Ross, you're come now. You're eight zero. This 49ers team, eight and zero. And before we jump into Thursday's game, before we look ahead, I want to ask you, being in this locker room, what's the mindset of this team? Being eight and zero, how are you guys blocking out this noise? What's the feeling around this locker room? I mean, we're just feeling really good. Um, you know, I don't really even hear about any of that kind of noise that's going on, any of that chatter. I don't really even watch the news or I don't really watch Sports Center at all. I hear most of my news from either my mom sending me a text or <laughs> my girlfriend. So, um, you know, we all kind of just, we figure out a good formula and we're all kind of just sticking to it. That's a good mentality to have, especially as you're looking ahead to another divisional matchup, coming off of one, heading into another on Monday night. But before we get there, Thursday was a pretty long time ago, so to refresh your memory, we might as well jump right into the highlights from Thursday night. It was a thriller. 49ers won the coin toss, chose to defer. Cardinals get the ball to start. Arizona opens up the game with a 36-yard carry by Kenyon Drake, their largest carry of the game. And a few plays later, Kyler Murray pitches it to Drake for his first game as a Cardinal and his first touchdown. Cards put up seven on the board first. Cardinals next drive defense comes up big on third and eight. D4 gets to Kyler Murray. He had another sack earlier that was wiped away. He gets it back that time. George Kittle, he got hurt a few plays before this, but this guy's a monster. Stiff arms a man on his way into the end zone to tie the game up at seven apiece. Now Cardinals ball, DJ Jones, he brings the pressure up the middle, but it's rookie Dre Greenlaw who gets the finish, his first career sack. Now Jimmy Garoppolo time. He finds Emmanuel Sanders for a 20-yard pickup. And just a few plays later on third down, it's Kendrick Bourne in the end zone. Garoppolo has now thrown touchdown passes to 10 different receivers this year. Now, late in the second, Matt Breida, he finds a hole. Credit to this guy, Ross, for the block. He picks up 31 yards on the ground. And a few plays later, Garoppolo, he gets tripped up but gets the ball to Breida again. Another big game for the running back, this time 19 yards. Now, look at this. On fourth and goal, Jeff Wilson Jr. stuffed at the line of scrimmage, but Cardinals called a timeout. 49ers get another crack at the end zone. This time, Garoppolo dials one up to Emmanuel Sanders for the score. Put him up 21-7 to going into the half. Now, Cardinals come out firing in the third quarter. Kyler Murray finds Keyshawn Johnson to cut the 49ers lead. Garoppolo again to Emmanuel Sanders. I don't even know how he caught this. It was a beauty of a pass and even more of a beautiful catch by the new guy. A few plays later, Garoppolo, a collapsing pocket, but he lobs it in the end zone. Dante Pettis with his second touchdown of the season. He hits him with a thriller dance in the end zone on that one. DeForest Buckner, he gets in on the action, gets a sack against Kyler Murray. And here's where the game shifts. Kyler Murray finds Andy Isabella, who manages to stay in bounds. The rookie wideout goes 88 yards to the house, cuts the lead by a score. Cardinals, well, after this play, they're successful with their two-point conversion, cutting the 49ers lead by just three. Now here is where Jimmy's shined. Third and long, four and a half minutes to go. Garoppolo finds none other than Emmanuel Sanders. Now on third and nine, under two minutes to go, and the game winner right here, Ross the Boss Dwelly, with an 11-yard reception. The 49ers run out the clock. It may not have been pretty, but the 49ers got the win over the cards. A five consecutive, five consecutive road wins for the fifth time in franchise history and the first since 1990. Offense converted on 11 of 17 third downs, the highest conversion rate by the 49ers since week 16 of 2017 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The defense registered three sacks on the night, and that's the fifth straight game with three or more sacks. People are saying that this team has been carried by the defense, and obviously, defense has been playing stellar. Yeah. But 
It was the offense's turn this time who delivered on Thursday. How has this team managed to win in so many different ways? Yeah, that's the cool thing about this year. You know, we're 8-0, but I feel like all eight games we've won in a different way, and Coach Shanahan has kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, but it just it makes you feel really good, you know, to know you can win in uh, different ways, and it makes your team really versatile. It was a breakout <clears throat> game for Jimmy Garoppolo, who is actually our Yahoo Fantasy Performer of the game. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his performance through a career high of four touchdowns while completing 28 to 37 pass attempts for 317 yards, a passer rating of 136.9, another career high. His third career game with 300 plus passing yards, his first since week 15 of 2017 against the Tennessee Titans. The quarterback spread the ball around, connecting with nine different receivers, including yourself, Ross. What did you see out of your quarterback on Thursday night? Jimmy's a baller. <laughs> Jimmy's uh, a baller indeed. That's hand, yeah, you know. I'm glad he finally got to show that to everyone. Um, you know, he's he's a really good player. He was the way he was moving around in the pocket uh, and just making those throws, like that one uh, we saw to Emmanuel Sanders. I was on the sideline for that one, watching that one, and that was the best throw I've probably ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Emmanuel hadn't even looked around, and then right when he looked, the ball was right there. It was crazy. So he, he's a really good player, and you know, he's the big reason why we're eating now. Absolutely, and we can't talk about Thursday's win without talking about your clutch reception in the fourth quarter. 49ers, they needed, a, they needed nine yards. Mm -hmm. You pick up 11. Mm -hmm. What was going through your mind during that play? Nothing really. <laughs> <laughs> Just knowing my route. Um, and then kind of when as I motioned across the uh, line of scrimmage, uh, I was trying to see if it was man or zone coverage. Um, and it was zoned, so I kind of sat down and, you know, Jimmy found me as he stepped up in the pocket and I knew I needed like three or four extra yards and I just tried to put my head down and get him. And I think Kyle Shanahan said that ball wasn't even, you weren't the first in his progression. Mm -hmm. That was, it was Debo, yeah. right? Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so let's diagnose some of your clutch plays. Before we jump into that fourth uh, quarter play, I want to talk a little bit about week seven against the Washington Redskins. Time for your origin DNA of a play. You have the Telestrator. Yep. Let's jump right into that game at FedEx Field. Right. We can we can never let go this game. It was it was yeah, this too much was fun. Yeah, this game was fun. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We got uh, we run fast up to the line of scrimmage. We call it fast break. Um, and I'm right here. Um, and so we snap the ball. I'm about to run a flat route. George is about to run a, a corner route, and we got KB here um, running a shallow, and then Dante over here coming back across just in case me and George aren't open. Um, so we're trying to create some natural rubs right here with Kendrick and uh, Dante and George to try and get me open on the flat. Um, my job is to bluff this end man on the line of scrimmage uh, and get to the flat, and if I outflank him, uh, Jimmy will throw me the ball, and we got Tevin here cutting that guy off so as we take it here so right here as I outflank him Jimmy sees that and I just he throws me the ball he puts it out there and um, the the weather kind of helped me too because as I <laughs> slid about a yard and a half and here we got uh, my tight end coach right here <laughs> he didn't think I got touched so he's going crazy telling me to run but I look like right there I look and then I was trying to celebrate, and I just hear him <laughs> yelling in my ear. I'm like, get off me, I'm trying to run. And then, All right, so we have to talk about the big play of the week, and that mm -hmm. was your 11-yard reception, sealing the game, 49ers taking the knee, running down the clock. Let's talk about that pickup. Yeah, so I'm starting here out wide, and I'm going to motion here, and we're trying to get a man zone read. Um, if their defender runs with me over here, then we're thinking it's man. Um, but if he, if he stays and the defense just kind of rotates, uh, then it's zone. So as I motion across here, I'm looking, and no one came across with me, so I'm thinking it's zone. And as I run this route, my route is designed to be an out and then come back in, because we have Debo over here. He's running a post route and Tevin's running an out route. So that's his first read. And so it, that's why it's this out 
and back in, we call it a China route, is designed to come back. So it's easier for Jimmy to, to see me instead of me just running out here. Um, so let it play out here. So I run that route, but since it's zone, I have no man on me, so there's no real reason to run back in here. So I kind of just feel space right here. And as Jimmy steps up, he just sees me. And I, right here, I just know I got to get a couple extra yards. And now I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> and so coming down with that reception, you're yep. aware. You catch it, you know you need nine. In your mind, you're reaching for those extra yards. It's kind of like you contorted your body, yeah. kind of spun to get yeah. those extra three or four. Yeah, right here. So I, before I knew it was like around the 39-yard line that I had to get. So right here, I'm thinking, all right, I better lunge for this extra yard. <laughs> and then right, I look right there. and. So it's not just your play that was impressive. It was actually your celebration. And I feel like we need to come up with a good name. Here we go. Okay, here we go. It's kind of like you have that Tiger Woods, <laughs> like, yeah. And then we got Kyle yeah. doing it. There's your there's, coach oh, there's right Jimbo. there. So I was trying to think, like, what are we naming this? Does this have a name just like the, yeah. It's got to have something to do with a punch. <laughs> the, I don't know. Niner punch? The ni I like the that. Niner punch. The Niner punch. <laughs> Look at that right there. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Niner punch. That was Let's during go. that was during the Pettis touchdown. <laughs> Embo's a big Tiger Tiger Woods fan too, so. So it, it all makes sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was your origin DNA of a play. Um, all right, Thursday, you catch four passes off four of your targets for 29 mm -hmm. yards in the divisional win. Now, while fans were excited for you, so was the 49ers locker room, yeah. so I've heard. So check out this quote from Kyle Shanahan. He says they were messing with you all week. They said that their number one goal of this game was to win, mm -hmm. but the number two goal was to improve Dwelly's yards per catch. Yeah. Do they not know that your name is Ross Clutch Dwelly? <laughs> I mean, was the locker room giving you a hard time going into this game? Uh, they weren't really giving me a hard time, but it was kind of a joke just because I had three catches, I think, and the one was the fourth and one where I got two yards and then... <laughs> Uh, one, uh, then there was a screen play that just got blown up and it was like minus two yards and then I had a check down that I got hit right away on. So it's kind of unlucky situ uh, situations that I was in, but I just try to make the most of it. And I, I appreciate Coach Shanahan, you know, knowing that and trying to help me out and, you know, drawing up some plays for me in the offense, you know. You ask and you shall receive. Yeah. So you honestly, you had a 0.5 yards per catch average going into Thursday. But all jokes aside, what you've done doesn't necessarily show up on the stat sheet. So you assume the fullback position in place of Kyle Juszczyk mm -hmm. and you did that admirably, admirably. But mm -hmm. was it a challenging transition for a tight end who has never played fullback before to jump into that position in place of Kyle? Yeah, it was definitely pretty challenging. Um, that first game was the Browns game where he did get hurt, his knee, something with his knee. Um, but so I was kind of thrust into the position. I hadn't really gotten any reps of it during the week. Uh, so it was kind of, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a tough transition right during that game. But having the whole week before the Rams game um, really helped. And I, I was starting to feel more comfortable in just each game. I just got more comfortable and more comfortable. Um, and it was great having uh, Kyle there to uh, to help me out with some tips and tricks. So now do we refer to you as Ross Dwelly, the tight end slash fullback? Yeah. Is it a part-time role? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I like to think of myself as the, the Swiss Army Knife. So I like I that. We, now it's just another nickname we're just throwing onto the list. Yeah. Clutch, Swiss Army Knife. <laughs> uh, but Kyle Juszczyk actually said in the locker room on mm -hmm. Tuesday that he was a little envious of the plays that <laughs> Kyle drew up for you like while he was gone. Yeah. He said that he went to Shanahan's offense after that, or to his office and was like, hey, like, what's up with that? Get me in there the way Ross was. But speaking of Kyle Juszczyk, he's expected to make his yeah. return in week 10. Same goes for Joe Staley. So to have several teammates go down and things to continue without a hitch, what does that say about the depth of this team? It says a lot to it. Um, you know, yeah, with both tackles down, um, school and Brunskill, you know, really stepped up. And then um, having Witherspoon down on defense too, uh, Emmanuel Mosley stepping up. Uh, it says a lot to the depth of our team. And it says a lot to our mindset, the mindset of our team, because 
you know, it sucks when someone goes down, but it's just next man up mentality and you just try and f fill in their shoes as best as you can. We can't have you on 49ers Live without obviously talking about your teammate, your buddy, George Kittle. Yeah. You guys are actually locker mates. And what yeah. makes it so crazy is I feel like you guys are two totally different personalities, <laughs> but you guys are just as close as they come. But what is what have you learned having a teammate, a guy like George Kittle, especially stepping in on plays like you have? Uh, I've learned so much from George. Uh, like I said in the past, he's a... Uh, really good leader for this team. Uh, he's a big reason why we're 8-0, um, and he's a big reason, you know, for my development and for my uh, development as an overall player, for sure. Just seeing the way he plays uh, on Sunday and the way he prepares for the game on Sunday or Monday or Thursday, whenever it is, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something you look up to and it's something you try and be. Your teammate, Mike Person, came up with the, another nickname for you, mm -hmm. Baby George. <laughs> how, are you okay with this designation? How, how do you feel about this nickname? I mean, I'm fine with it. You know, George is an unbelievable player. So, I mean, have anything to do with him, I'm, I'm fine with it. But, you know, the other nicknames I like a little better. I'm not going to lie. I like the Swiss <laughs> Army Knife as well. I'm just going to throw that out well, there. I'm Swedish, so I, maybe it could be the Swede Army Knife or something. Oh, okay. Trademark it. We're getting fancy over Trademark here. Trademark it. <laughs> All right, so 49ers flying high. We talked about it at the top of the show. 8-0. Now you have the Seahawks coming into town. Is there any added pressure in a game like this, your prime time, a divisional game? Or is this? are you guys approaching this as business as usual? Uh, it's definitely business as usual. You know, we know... Uh, Seattle's a really good team. Um, you know, we know what Russell Wilson's been doing this whole year, um, how, how their defense has been playing. Um, so it's going to be a really big challenge for us, but we're just looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to going 9 0. Not mad at that at all. 49ers host the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. Tickets are actually still available. Head to 49ers.com slash tickets. It's also the salute to service game where hundreds of military men and women will be in attendance and involved in game day activities and activations. Uh, every fan in attendance, I'm going to pass this one over to you. you. Every fan in attendance will receive a salute to service rally towel. So make sure you get there mm. and support. Kickoff is at 515. If you can't make there, that's what we want. That's that, what, what, I want to see this. How do you feel yeah. about the faithful's turnout, both on oh, the road and at home? It's been amazing. Like every every road game we've been to, the other team has had to go on like the silent count, you know. So yeah. it just says a lot. So it's uh it's pretty cool. Definitely looking for you guys to fill up Levi Stadium on Monday. And if you can't make it, the kick is at 515. You can catch it on ESPN. Ross, the man with a million nicknames, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate having you. Thanks and for, for the rest me. of you guys, stay tuned to 49ers.com for everything leading up leading up to Monday, and we'll see you guys then.